Greetings. This presentation is about task-based control of continuum robots using underactuated discrete rod models. The work is from the University of Tennessee, Vanderbilt University, and is funded by the National Science Foundation. Models of continuum robot configuration are often written in terms of a set of minimal coordinates, such as segment curvatures, usually with constant curvature over each actuated segment. The dynamics are then formulated using Lagrangian mechanics and represented in a fully actuated form analogous to rigid link robot dynamics. The main benefit of this approach is that conventional control techniques can be directly adapted for control in joint space. However, task space control is more complicated. And in the end, this approach usually results in a coarse approximation of robot shape that ignores the underactuated variable curvature dynamics of the flexible structure. Even for a robot designed for constant curvature at quasi-static speeds, underactuated modes can significantly affect the performance of dynamic tasks and can appear in both steady state and transient components of the motion. More descriptive models of continuum robots can be derived using the partial differential equations of elastic rods. This usually leads to some discretized model with high resolution, expressed in maximal coordinates that is, position and orientation are included explicitly as state variables, and there are some constraints. The benefits of this approach are that it captures all the underactuated variable curvature dynamics, and that we have direct access to task space variables. Historically, such models have been considered not ideal for control due to their complexity and underactuated nature. But we aim to show how underactuated models in maximal coordinates are quite convenient for formulating task space control schemes directly. We explore two different ways of arriving at the same dynamic equations for an underactuated continuum robot. First, we can start with the continuous partial differential equations of an elastic rod and discretize them along the arc length using a centered difference scheme. This results in a set of differential algebraic equations with index 3. Performing index reduction produces an index one system that can be integrated in time using standard approaches. Alternatively, we can use a discrete constrained Lagrangian approach, which starts by representing the elastic material with a discrete geometry, associating positions and moments with the nodes and associating angles and forces with the connecting edges. The discrete geometry contains index three constraints due to inextensibility. The configuration vector Q includes the position and orientation of each discrete link. We form the constrained Lagrangian based on discrete kinetic and potential energies, and then apply the Euler-Lagrange equation for constrained systems, where lambda represents internal constraint forces. Then performing index reduction, we arrive at a final index one set of differential algebraic equations that are equivalent to those produced by the first PDE-based approach. However, the constrained Lagrangian approach has revealed the equations in a convenient matrix form. M is a diagonal matrix of inertial terms, and A is a sparse matrix describing the constraint structure. Coriolis forces are collected in gamma, and viscoelastic terms are present in F. U contains any actuation terms, and B is the typical selection matrix of ones and zeros. This general model form conveniently facilitates task space control, because task space outputs are expressible as linear functions of the configuration variables. Then the model directly produces the output dynamics with a small number of linear solves. The result can be used to perform input output feedback linearization as an inner loop control law. The feedback linearization requires strong inertial coupling between the control input and the task space output, and a damped version increases robustness when coupling is weak. Armed with the task space feedback linearization, we could employ a standard linear outer loop control law, but this combination has been shown to exhibit poor robustness to parameter uncertainty. Instead, we propose a standard sliding mode control structure to result in first order aerodynamics. Lyapunov stability of the sliding condition is then achieved by a switching control law with boundary layer to eliminate chatter. The feedback linearization needs to know the full dynamic state of the robot at all times, but we assume that a sensor only provides very limited measurements, for example, only the end effector position and velocity. To estimate the full dynamic state, we construct an observer based on applying corrective forces to an observer model based on simple spring and damper terms. 
This construction results in a passive observer and is physically intuitive. The overall task space trajectory control structure is shown in this block diagram. We tested our approach in simulation based on a two-segment pneumatic soft continuum robot. Parameter values were taken from a physical prototype. Using the two control pressures, we control the end effector position along a desired trajectory where the observer only has access to the sensed tip position. To demonstrate robustness, all simulations were performed with significant parameter differences between the observer model and the ground truth robot, and significant initial state estimation error. Starting from the straight state, which is singular, the approach succeeds in driving the task space error to zero under significant parametric modeling error in the case of this circle tracing task. Similarly, in the case of a cyclical line tracing task, the approach again drives error to zero. These tasks are high speed, and the controller is working hard to overcome significant underactuated dynamics, as evidenced by the high frequency modes seen in the control torques. In future work, we plan to expand the approach to consider 3D deformations, actuator dynamics, and validate the approach further on experimental hardware platforms. Thanks for your attention, and we hope to see you later at the poster session.